Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to my channel. For today's VBOTS tutorial video, we'll be doing a line follower robot using EPUC and writing our controller code in C++. If you're looking for a controller code in other programming languages such as Python, look for links in the description below. I'll include all of the timings here and in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. We will start by creating a new project. Give a name, I'm calling mine My Project Line Follower EPUC and click continue. Make sure to select add a rectangular arena and click continue. Click done. This will load a new world in VBOTS. Let's add a robot in our VBOTS world. I'm using EPUC. You can use any robot you want, including your own custom robot. Click on the plus sign. Click on Proto Nodes, click on Robot, and then scroll down till you see GCTronics. Select EPUC, EPUC, and click Add. This will add the EPUC robot to your VBOTS world. Make sure to save your work. Next, our robot needs sensing ability to detect the line. This can be done using infrared sensors or even cameras. We'll be using infrared sensors, also known as IR sensors. In EPUC, there is a ground sensor slot available and this is where we will add our sensors. Click on the plus sign to add a node. Initially, I couldn't find IR sensor in VBOTS. Turns out they're available under distance sensor and I will show you how to access them in just a few minutes. Under base node, select distance sensor and click add. In your scene tree, go to distance sensor and under distance sensor, scroll down to type. As you can see, there are options for infrared, sonar and laser. Select infrared. To visualize this sensor in VBOTS, let's enable the rays. Go to views, optional rendering and select show distance sensor rays. Our sensor is in the ground slot. So let's go under the rectangular arena. As you can see, there's a ray pointing downward and this is our IR sensor in VBOTS. Now let's move our sensor a little bit to the left. In your scene tree, go to the distance sensor. In translation, make Y equal to minus 0.01 meter to move the sensor by one centimeter in left. We will also change the name, making it easy to access the sensor from our controller. Select name and then type IR0. Similarly, let's add a second IR sensor. Click on the plus sign, base nodes, distance sensor and add. Under distance sensor, go to type and select infrared. Next, let's move this sensor to right by changing translation. Make Y is equal to 0.02 meter. We will name this sensor IR1. Our last step in setting up the environment is creating a line or a track for the robot to follow. In real world, this is usually a colored tape. So I'm using one that was made by Draker DG Robotics YouTube channel. It's a pretty awesome channel and I'll add a link to their channel in the description below. I've converted this model to a proto node, making it easy to use. I'll add a link in the description below. Just download it and add it to the proto folder of your VBOTS project. Now let's add this track to our VBOTS world. Click on the plus sign and select it from the Proto Current Projects. Click Add. As you can see, it has been imported in our VBOTS world. I'm going to move it so that it's closer to the floor. Select Track 1, select Transition and make Y is equal to minus 0.0075. Since our arena is small for the track, let's make it bigger. In the VBOTS tree scene, select rectangular arena and floor size and make it two by two. Now a line follower robot essentially works by detecting the colored line using IR sensors. So to give it a good contrast, let's make our floor white. For this, select floor appearance and click on convert to base node. This is something that can be done with any proto nodes and allows you to make changes to the internal properties of a node. Under floor appearance, go to base color map Right click and select reset to default value. This makes our floor white. Now let's work on our controller. To do this, go to the menu bar, click on wizards, new robot controller. Click continue and then in the language choose C++. Click continue and then give a name to your controller. 
and click continue. Make sure to select open the file in text editor and click done. As you can see, it'll create a file for you and open it in the text editor. It'll give you some basic information that will help you write your code. Now, one more important thing to do is also make sure that your epoch is using this new controller code that you just wrote. To do this, go to your VBOT scene tree, click on epoch, and under epoch, go to controller. In the bottom here, click on select, and in the list, choose the controller code that you just created and click OK. And make sure to save your VBOTS world. With that, let's get into the code. First, I'm going to replace this time step with a constant value of 64. Next, we are going to enable our motors. For this, we need to add the motors as header files. Next, let's create instances for our motor and also enable them. I'll be driving my motors with velocity. So I'm setting the initial velocity to zero and setting the position as infinity. Make sure to keep saving your VBOTS controller code. Let's create variables to determine speed for left and right motor and set them at max speed by default. I'm first creating a global variable called max speed. Next, I'm creating variables left speed and right speed for both of my motors and setting it to max speed. Next, inside the while loop, I'm also allocating the speed to the motors. With our motors all set, now let's focus on our sensors. To use our sensor, we need to include the distance sensor header file. Next, let's create instances for both of our sensors and enable them. Make sure to keep saving your VBOTS controller code. I want to take some time here to explain how infrared sensors work and how we will detect the line. Infrared sensors essentially have a light emitter and a detector. A light emitter throws light. This light is absorbed and reflected back. Depending on the type of material and color, different objects will emit light differently. And the detector in the infrared sensor will detect the reflected light back. Based on the value of light that was reflected back, we can detect different objects. And then we use this information to differentiate between our floor and our line. All right, so we have two infrared sensors giving us information about the objects that it detects, which in this case is floor and the track. So all we need is a simple if else condition to detect the line and turn the epoch accordingly. So if this left sensor detects black line means the robot needs to turn left and if the right sensor detects the line it has to go right with this now let's get into our main logic the first step is reading the sensor values for a line follower robot our objective is to detect the line as seen by left or right sensor. 
After playing with these values for my current setup, I found that I can detect the line when the values are between 4 and 16. I'm going to use this information to see if either of my sensors see the line and accordingly modulate the speed. By default, I want to keep both left and right speed at max. Make sure to save your VBOTS controller code. Next, let's build our code. I have one error and let me fix it real quick. Let's compile again. Let's run our simulation and as you can see, it's following the line. As you can see, on some occasions, it overshoots the line. Further, you can also tweak the speed to get the robot to follow the line more closely. An important factor for a line following robot is the ability to detect line. So depending on the robot, the sensor, the lighting condition and your environmental setup, you might have to tweak the values to be able to detect those lines. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, use the comment section below. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.